I don't need to revitalize nothing. Everybody know who I am. No snacks beats hard times, 81 to 64. We got point guard Shango Niang came back, first win of the season for you on the court. Uh, and uh, No Snacks is now 2-2. Two and two. How do you feel like you played today? Uh, I feel like I played solid. I tried to get everyone involved and make sure we got the win today. That was the most important part today. And uh, just uh, everybody's on the same page right now. So we're looking good. We're looking to get more wins throughout the season. You speak of being on the same page, you guys added some, some veteran Drew League talent. Sean Marshall had 20 points. Larry Gordon came in and did work on both ends of the floor for you guys. How do you feel like those fellas fit in with what you guys do as a team? Well, um, they're feeling really good. Um, they put in some new offenses, and uh, Sean, it's just easier for me because I like to pass. So uh, he has high IQ also, so I get we're on the same page, and I get to find him for a lot of open shots. And Larry's good getting the rebound and pushing off the floor. And then uh, Ryan Nitz also had a really nice game, 20 points. Uh, seems like you guys could have found him more often. Uh, so what's a key to maximizing the kind of offense that you guys have? I think we just got to keep running our offense and keep running it all the way through because uh, we'll find one option and uh, we'll just expose the mismatch. And whoever has the mismatch, we're going through that game. So that's our plan. Garrett Jefferson of the Panthers leading the team and scoring 15 points, two steals off the bench, first win of the season. And uh, it looks like at the end of this game, you guys really took it to the Nova Stars, uh, just being aggressive. How do you feel about your aggression in this one? Um, I feel good about it. Um, we just we had we were 0 3, so we wanted to start off the game aggressive and play hard and not be last like a days ago like we were the last few games. So I think we did. I think we came out and did that well. Coach Al wasn't very happy with his team at halftime. You guys had a one point lead. What did Pop tell you guys at the half? Um, he just said we got to keep doing the little things. We got to make free throws. We can't turn the ball over uncontested and uh, keep getting stops on defense. And finally, you know, you mentioned the 0-3 start. You guys look competitive in, in certain parts, but the offense was kind of uneven and, and inconsistent. So what does the team need to do, even with this win a day, to just be, be better at executing with the talent that you guys do have? Um, I think we just gotta we gotta keep playing and keep moving and um, just just try and keep getting open shots and if it doesn't work don't we, we we can't get worried about it we just gotta go to the next play. Will Davis, player of the game, CABC finally gets their first win of the season and one of the best performances by a big man, 33 points for you. Uh, what was it like, especially in that third quarter when you was just going off, getting all these rebounds and putting them back? Uh, before the game, uh, Harry was talking about we need this game just like to get a better seed for playoffs. So he was like, this is basically a playoff game for us. So I, I just like took that personal and went in and playing my game, just trying to make us uh, make our team win. Do you feel like you need to get more touches offensively? It seems like a lot of your points, it's not like they run a lot of plays for you. I mean, you're, you're hustling into production on the, on the court. Uh, I, just, I just play within my team. I don't want to be begging for the ball because I feel like that will mess up our chemistry a little bit. So I was just trying to play within my game, getting some offensive rebounds, taking some in transition, and got my points like that. And then, uh, you know, you guys had a 19-point lead. Jug Life kept coming back on you guys. What allowed y'all to close them out and, and finally end and get y'all first win here? I feel like we just had to – make some smarter plays at the end. We were turning the ball over, we were letting them get wide open threes, and then so towards the end of the stretch, we just increased our defense a little bit and then closed the game out. It, it just looked like you guys always had control of this game, even though it got close at the end. Um, how did you feel about how y'all closed out the ICANN All-Stars here? Like I always say, uh, we got a, lot, a team with a lot of experienced guys, man, that, that got a lot of minutes in the NBA and overseas. So uh, I'm always confident when it comes down to the end of the game like that, that we're going to pull it out. And then we had Pooh last week. He talked about how you guys are going to continue to bring guys in. Last week, you got the young guys, Shaquan and Elijah. This week, you got one of your guys, Scott Cutley. Uh, how do you feel Scott did out there today? Scott did well, man. I mean, we didn't expect him to do much, you know, because he's coming back from overseas. So we didn't expect him to do much, but just to get his feet wet and break a sweat and, you know, just get his rhythm back. But the young guys, I mean, um, we've been there before. So it's just a matter of just molding these guys, man, and just – and just letting them see the path that we went through and just getting better each game, man. That's it. How do you how do you anticipate July going for LA Unified? The same. The same. It's about consistency, man. Um, 
We just we just we just find ways to win games, and then when it comes down to playoffs, we try to turn it up a little bit. Jashe Rock is here, and we just saw. I've been doing this for three years at the Drew League, and I've never seen a team score only 47 points, let alone a team that came into the game undefeated. Yeah. So, no 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 stats. You know what I'm saying? Like, what kind of defense did y'all plan to play against him, and how did y'all how did y'all execute? Um. We didn't plan the defense. We just planned we wanted to get stops. Like, because playing with horse and uh, action, they really pick up the ball and turn guards. So at the position I play, I'm, I'm in between where I'm playing a big and a guard. So I just got to stay active and active hands and one shot out, get one shot and rebound and push it. So basically, we just was talking to each other, standing on the swivel, making sure we just we was uh, having each other back. So that was the main key of it, just locking up fully. It wasn't no game plan. It was just. Playing with good players, players that know how to play basketball, it's make it easier for you to, to make the game easier and fun on both ends. Now you were the, you know, the only real big man out there. I mean, the, you had the Nunnally brothers, and again with Kenny and Horace, those guys are not even six feet tall. Have you ever been a part of a game where a team only shot like 20% from the field in the first half? Uh, yeah, I have. I actually have. It's, 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 I know it's a difficult thing for them, the way they shoot, because they live by that three and die by that three. But all we want to do is make sure it was contested shots, because we know we were, we were a lot bigger and we were, we were quicker to the ball, because they didn't really have a lot of guys that really wanted to get to the paint. Everything had to be flashy. We had guys that wouldn't mind going through people getting to the paint. So that was, I feel like that was the difference of the game, because we warmed down with just getting buckets inside. Then we started relaxing, shoot jumpers too, but everything was falling for us, so it made, a, it made the game. When everything falling for you, make the game a lot easier. Yeah, and finally, you know, this team has gone through a lot of changes through the first three weeks. So with y'all being 4-1, and one, what do you see in July that the team needs to do to solidify y'all as contenders? As long as we continue to keep playing together, because that's the team that's going to win it at the end, the team that's the most oriented, most team oriented, know how to play together, know how to use their weapons, know how to go to this thing that's keep working, you know how to lock in and stay focused the whole time. Because, you know, it get easy to get out here to get a lead or play against a team and high adrenaline going and everybody just getting one-on-ones or everybody trying to do whatever they want to do to play. But, you know, we stay on the, stay on the same page and we keep playing together. It's going to be easy. That's all I want us to do. As, as we keep playing, just build more camaraderie and the game going to be easy for us. All right, you got Jalen Bland of Legacy and very impressive victory here. There's back-to-back wins for, for Legacy. Uh, you guys scored a season high for the whole league in points, 99 points. You had 29 of those points. Um, what was it like just getting the, getting the good looks against problems tonight? Yeah, it was just all about being aggressive, man. Uh, the last few games, I've, I've been tentative and just thinking a lot. So this game, I just wanted to come out and be aggressive and produce and uh, be efficient with it as well. So try to take limit the turnovers and then Get easy back basket so and we, we wanted to play an up and down type of game and we were successful successful doing that so it worked out for us was there any concern about playing that type of game against a team with the kind of length and, and athleticism that problems has uh nah we just wanted to be aggressive and like we said get up in them like we've been doing the last game that's what got us a victory so we just wanted to keep doing that and uh and, and just play play hard and that's what we did it worked out for us so we didn't want to be uh, afraid of anything we can't you can't be afraid you got to just go out there and make it happen so that's what we did and how do you feel about the way you know coach Kev has put this roster together I mean obviously with you here at the beginning of the year you pretty much are their, their core guy uh, I, I think he put it together well I, I think we got a good core group of guys that uh, that come out and, and give it their all and play hard on both ends of the floor so I think he's doing pretty well so far Justin Johnson of Skyrise leading the squad to the first win of the season. Y'all the last team to win a game at the Drew League. And they needed all 31 of your points, 12 of 15 from the field. We talk all the time about how efficient you are. But what did you see out there that let you get so many good looks? Uh, just getting in the paint. I feel like whenever I get in the paint and get easy baskets like layups or floaters or get to the free throw line, it kind of just starts my game, the whole game. And then I'm able to shoot pull-ups, which, which was my main shot, mid-range, and then able to go back out to the three. And that kind of just took over from there. You guys didn't get off to the best start in this one. Um, L.A. Loop had a, had a decent lead um, towards the end of the first quarter, but then second quarter, you guys went on a run to take control of the game, tied up at, at the half. Uh, what changed that 
you guys got, got back into this one? Well, we had goals where we had to get two or three defensive stops in a row. And I think when we got that, we was able to get the rebound and get on the break. And we had James Ennis and other guys just kind of catch lobs. And we got easy layups. You know, I was able to attack the paint and uh, find easy dump off passes to the bigs. And so once that happened, you know, we was able to get a good lead. Now, a lot of people, I'm not sure how many people know this, but you were the finals MVP up in, up in Canada. Uh, the form that you showed there, how are you able to translate it here? Um, well, I felt like that gave me a lot of confidence, uh, even though I played in the Drew League for about three, four years. Uh, I always loved playing here. So I think just coming here and just having that experience playing, um, just being aggressive and knowing, you know, that I could play, and that kind of just elevates everything. Meta World Peace, all the pandas leading the team, the back-to-back -back wins, uh, game high 28 points for you. And first thing we got to talk about, it looked like you had a Jordan shrug at the end of your last three-pointer to close this one out. You know, it was a great game. The guys, uh, that who we got to deal with, right? You know, that was, um, what's the name of that team we played? Who, what's the name of the team? Playing the Bulldogs. They was the Bulldogs, huh? Yeah, yeah um, Hanks, Hanks Bulldogs? Yeah. Hanks Bulldogs, yeah. They always tough, man. I remember last year, you know, um, so I, I wanted to come out and just play basketball um, for the love, you know. So I try to come out here and play hard. You know, last couple of years I've been playing basketball here at the Jewel. I haven't, I haven't been given 100 percent, but I'm just like, why not? You know what I'm saying? Why not come out here and uh, you know try, you know, to have a good time? And that's what I did today. So last week you guys had to deal with a very young team that closes. Uh, had a big lead. You sat most of the fourth quarter while Benny went off. You know, Benny finished before you. You had to come back in and help close that game out. This one against the Bulldogs, you know, a, a bigger team, a group of guys who've been together more. You guys had another big lead. They came back on you. Why are you guys blowing big leads, and how are you guys able to still preserve the wins? Well, you know, we got to make sure uh, we get our young guys uh, more, more control. Sometimes they get double, and they get a little bit nervous. So, you know, next week we got to make sure if we get double, that we, uh, we relax and we don't get too nervous. And I know you've really taken a leadership role with this squad, the Pandas, and this is a really diverse roster. you got size, outside presences, uh, and, and Jamar always talks about developing the young guards. So what are you trying to develop in these guys for the month of July? Well, you know, this, for the month of July, I want the guys just to play, pass the ball, but I, I want to make sure that we're getting better. Hopefully we can keep this team in the Drew League for like a couple years. And that's why I got the team I got. You know, we got some, we got some good guys. And what we're trying to do is just have a good time, um, learn to play together. And I, I don't really care about having the best players. I just care about improving. That's it. Taylor King making his 2016 Drew League season debut for the Spirit. Spirit gets their fourth straight win and 28 points to you. Six out of 12 made threes. Do you feel like this was your best Drew League game? Um, yeah, probably. I mean, I've had a couple games in, in, in the past years where I've, you know, come in and, and hit, hit, hit some really big shots. But uh, today was, you know, consistent. So that was good. And we got the win. So 18 second half points for you. Day Day uh, Smooth carried the load in the first half. Uh, how, did, how did the game progress for you to the point where you felt like you could take on a bulk of the team's offense. Well, they started making a comeback, and uh, you know there was a stretch there for like five or seven, seven minutes where I wasn't getting, I didn't get a touch, or I wasn't, I, I didn't feel like I was in the flow of the game. And then they started making a comeback, and then we were, we were up six and we were up four. And then I said, you know what, I gotta, I gotta take over a little bit here and uh, get my shot going. I take it to the basket and got it to the foul line, and you know hit a couple big shots, and then we came out with the win. So, and obviously you've had, you had an eventful weekend already. Uh, how, how are you just feeling outside of outside of the Drew the past year and getting engaged and everything? Uh, it was it's been great, man. I had a great night last night. Uh, got engaged. It was awesome. Uh, but and then I spent a year in Lithuania. Had a great season out there, and uh, you know looking to looking to move on up in uh, in the European European uh, professional level. So it's great, man. I'm, I'm enjoying myself. Benny Boatwright of the Closers. Y'all play the craziest games in the Drew. I mean. Last weekend, y'all had a game come down to a game winner by Lonzo and a game winning block shot by Chimizi. Right. Then you dropped 42 points in a 19 point comeback, but wound up losing that one in overtime. Now you get one culture. 
and this game was close the whole time. You and David Nwaba were going off. Dwayne Poli wins it at the end. So well, just describe what the feeling was on the floor the last minute or so of this game. Oh, you know, we're, we're a young team. So when we go into games, we, we don't plan on having uh, crunch time games all the time, but it just happens because we're young. But at the end of the game, you just got to – you gotta stay focused and try to shit, try to win. It looked like your game changed from the first half to the second half. You missed ten of thirteen shots in the first half, uh -huh. made five or six in the in the second half, including a dunk that I'm pretty sure we're going we're going to see. We haven't seen you really yam on anybody uh -huh. like that. Uh, did you just decide you needed to be more aggressive in the second half? Definitely, definitely. Uh, the second half is where I try to come alive. Yeah, first half I try to get my rhythm, try to get try to get the shots I usually get. But the second half I try to take over, no matter who I'm playing with. And uh, yeah, I just tried to do that this game, so it worked out. Now you guys were up by two, you lost the ball off your leg, and one culture had it down two with about 13 seconds left. Uh, what did y'all talk about in the timeout with you guys not having any timeouts left? And, and them having the ball, wind, they wind up getting the baseline jumper to tie it. Right. First and foremost, I apologize to the team because I lost the ball in the turnover. But we just tried to, we just tried to um, get a stop. You know, it just, I made a mistake, so just get it back on defense. And uh, they made the shot, so we got to come back and try to get a bucket, and it, and it worked out. Kerry Carter of Redemption. And you had two teams coming in this weekend that were undefeated that took L's. You guys refused to be the third team. Uh, you made more free throws by yourself than they made as a team, and obviously year two closed this one out. Uh, but what was it like getting into a, your first close game of the season? Uh, it was different. I mean, we had a different dynamic today. We were missing our leading scorer, Jonathan Gibson. Um, so he kind of adds a real different uh, component for our team. So, we, you know, we just wanted to come together, and all the guys. We want everybody to know that, you know, we're still a solid team even without our guy. But, you know, we just wanted to hold it down and make sure we could be the last undefeated team. Now, things got a little crazy as far as uh, – overtime is concerned even the fact that they got into overtime just a comedy of errors turnovers missed shots missed free throws uh what enabled you guys to get the opportunity for you to get to the line and then to get the last stop to hold on for the win i mean at the end of the day we got pros on our team you know what i'm saying we got guys that do this for a living and we got guys that are tough and we have a good coach so at the end of the day it was just the guidance for us and uh just executing what was drawn up so What's the plan for redemption to, to get better in July with the uncertainty between whether Johnson going to be here or not? Uh, just other guys stepping up and kind of knowing where guys want the ball. For me as a point guard, I, I got to know where guys want it, know who hasn't had touches you know, in a while and who hasn't had a chance to get their rhythm going. So I think for me personally, it'll just be you know, knowing the personnel. And for us as a team, just learning to play within our, our means and what we're trying to do collectively. Amani gets the player of the game for COA, second win of the season. And this was a tight one, 73-72 over a Jaguars team that was playing really well. You had the game, what turned out to be the game winner here. Uh, how, did, can, how did you describe the last minute of, of play here? Intensity. I just wanted to bring the intensity to close the game out. And it just so happened that the ball landed in my hand and I was able to capitalize on that play to give us a point lead. They had, the Jaguars had two opportunities to win this game. Um, in between COA, you know, Mike Ojo had it, missed the free throw in the front end of one-on-one. -on -one. How were you guys able to get the stops? Well, it just so happened that they went into a pick and roll with the man that I was guarding. And when he switched off, I had full confidence that I could shut him down because typically that's what I have to do is guard the best player. So luckily for our team, that it came in our way where I had to guard the last game winning shot. And then there was another one. I wasn't on that one, but he met, uh, fortunately missed that one. Monty, do you consider yourself a, a, a – I know you consider yourself a leader of this team, but do you consider yourself a captain of this team going into July? Yes, I do. I'm definitely a captain of the team right now. Uh, we had uh, Craig, the Rhino Smith. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to play this summer, so I'll fill his void. COA protect each other. So we played four weeks at the Drew League. There's only been one player that's gotten player of the game each and every week, and that's been Van Gerard. Even with Casper Ware coming back, you led the team, you led the whole game with 18 points, had nine rebounds, and you even took a slip in the first half, still came back strong. Do you feel like you're an MVP candidate? Man, I just want to win, to be honest. Man. I do whatever it takes to win. Um, I definitely didn't think I want to play the game. Man. I, I thought I didn't play too well, but I'm glad we can. I'm glad Castro's back. 
um, we, we played well. I mean, played against a tough team and played well. Who do you think should have been player of the game if it wasn't you? All of us, to be honest. We all played. Our defense played, was player of the game. You know, defense was the game. That's how we stayed in it. We didn't play too well on offense, but our defense was there, and that's why we held them down. They shot 9 of 39 from the field in the first half. Uh, undefeated team, Birds Revenge. 30 missed shots, and for the game, they, they missed 24 out of 27 threes. Who, what has been the key for y'all on defense? Just talking. I mean, we, we trust each other on defense. That's the biggest thing. We know our bigs is going to have our back. We know, uh, you know, Gene's going to always be there. We know uh, we our guards pressure up. We got Cass back. I mean, Irv, I mean, our, our front line and our, our whole defense just in general is just we lock down. That's what we start off on, on defense. We're going to ask you one more time. Do you feel like you're an MVP candidate for this season, 2016? <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Yeah. There are three teams at 4-0 heading into July. Houdini's All-Stars is one of them. Jordan Sweeney with a game high, 27 points on 19 shots, four steals. Tale of two halves for you guys. You guys are down nine, wound up winning this game, 92-85. to 85. What, what did Coach tell you all at halftime? Our energy was just low coming out to start. You know, we were out of the rhythm. And then uh, we switched up our press, and then, you know, it worked for us, and we just took the lead and never looked back. A lot of your buckets came in transition. Did a great job of, of, of just finishing at the cup. So, what was it in the, you know, in in the second half that I mean, after you switched the press up, how did you just get the, all those great looks? Well, Coach Cav and all my teammates just encouraged me, said we need you, like you, you are energy guy. We need you to bring it, and uh, that's exactly what I did, you know. And you saw it the second half. It's a really balanced team here. Y'all have won four weeks in a row, and you're the fourth different player to get player of the game. Are y'all trying to? What are y'all trying to establish in July? Oh, we we we're trying to get that championship first and foremost. But you know, our our team is so deep and versatile. You know, we got guys that can take you inside, outside, and you know, as you saw today, anybody can turn it on at any time. So that makes us real dangerous.